next podcast, this is going to be our third podcast. Um, I wanted to just give a big shout out. Thanks to everybody that's been tuning into these. Um, it's super, been super fun to do. I um, want to give also a shout out to my neighbor at White's Modern Industrial for these sweet chairs for letting us use these. These things just, you know, pretty much make this whole scene look super pimping. So I um, want to give them a shout out, uh, but really want to get into this podcast, something that, you know, I've known this guy for a long time. He's like pretty much like a brother to me. Um, Opie Baker, Opie Nathan Baker, Nathan Opie Baker. Thanks for coming. Um, we're just going to talk about pretty much all the, everything, man. We're going to talk about everything tonight. We're going to go through it all. This is going to be the longest podcast probably it's ever been. Yeah. We're going to cover it all. So, um, but I want to really start out with, and I don't think I've ever asked you this. I've known you for a long time. Like what, what you really got when you first got into skateboarding, like what, how you got into skateboarding. I don't, I was thinking about it today and I was just all, I can't even remember how Opie even got into riding skateboards. So maybe you could share that with us. Um, well, my older brother skated. So and he was six years older than me. <clears throat> and we, uh, I actually got skateboards for Christmas when I was like really little. I was like six years old or something. And uh, it was like one of those like booties or like, like knockoff cheap skateboards yeah. and we were like, like all like trying a to Nash yeah like some some Nash special you know and, yeah. and, uh, and I tried bombing a hill with my brother thinking I was a badass hit some gravel and then just totally ate shit and uh and I was like I'm never skating this is dumb and so my <laughs> older brother actually like stole my skateboard and parted it out for his skateboard oh that's right and so then like it wasn't until I was like 12 that I wound up like thinking like maybe I would try it again and I got together with some dudes. I got this old Mike McGill mini. Yeah. And we went to the Post Falls library and they had <laughs> like, they had like a parking curb, like, you know, the little three-sided parking curbs. Yeah. And, uh, and they were like, oh yeah, we're doing board slides on it. And so I like tried a couple of board slides and I was like, dude, this is actually all right. You know, yeah. like yeah. maybe I'm, maybe I'm, maybe I'm a skateboarder. Maybe I need to think about this maybe again. I'll, maybe I'll give it another try. You know? I'm more of a curb skater, less of a downhill yeah, artist. And it seemed cool, you know, like my older brother was into it and the whole lifestyle looked cool to me. Sure. So, you know, then when I started skating with those guys, we started skating around town, just, you know, doing a little skate stuff. There was launch ramps back then, so. Yeah, what year, what, what, what year do you think that was? Late 80s? Or... Oh, man, that was like, well, I was, I was 12, so that was like 87. Okay. I was like 87. Yeah. You know, Mike McGill was still doing stuff. Yeah, he still so. kills it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so he started skating some launch ramps and stuff. And I remember uh, I just wanted to be like one of those kids that just wanted to skate with guys that were skating. You yeah. Know? So like, I remember we were skating around and then one of the older dudes, like Eric Nelson and, uh, and this dude, Johan, that used to hang out. Yeah, and they were like, yeah, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, and they were like, oh, we're going to go skate this launch ramp. And everybody else, all the other guys were like, oh, we can't go skate. With the big guys, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, I'll sketch out. Dude, I totally want to go skate that launch. Yeah, you're you like, know? bring it on. I yeah, dude. So, like, yeah. Dude, I look like a fool, you know, trying, yeah, just man. whipping all over the place, but I didn't care, dude. I just wanted, like, to skate with dudes that were skating. Yeah. And I think that always just was, like, the pervasive attitude. Yeah, you've always right been now. like that, dude. That's one thing that I've always really liked about you is, like, you're just, you're about skating. You know what I mean? And you've even made that comment. You're like, I like skateboarding. I like to do the... You know, because as you get older, all of a sudden you're going like, oh, all these other stuff like skateboard advocacy, you know, helping the skateboard community, uh, skateboard stuff, uh, collecting skateboards. But you're always just been about like, I just like to ride damn skateboards, man. So yeah. it sounds like that's just always been your MO. Yeah, I mean, I think that there was, uh, there's like the skateboard style. Yeah. But I, I don't think I really ever gave that much of a crap about the skateboard style. Like, I just wanted to skate. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, like, obviously I got sucked into the baggy pant era. I you know, remember that. I, yep. I was wearing the, the massive pants. <laughs> yeah. You know, we actually even had like the shoelaces so yeah, we could yeah. hover our pants lower. Yeah. When you took them off, they looked like the shorts from like a 500 pound man. Yeah. But, yeah, like, remember, dude, but yeah. like we weighed like 96 pounds. We're wearing like These size little 40. In yeah, there. Size 40, you know, planet Earth jeans on like a 96 year old frame or 96 pound frame. Yeah. I you know, it, so. Dude. so funny. And I remember the, the park opening and, and uh, Councilwoman. Uh, it's Amy. Amy some brother. Yeah. yeah. Well, and she was like, who knew it would be this busy? And I'm like, we knew. <laughs> like, like, we knew it would be this busy. Man, we yeah, knew there would yeah. be like 
a ton of people down here skating yeah. this thing. Woody and, knew. And Woody knew, dude. And Woody was, was always on board from get-go, you know. And yeah. he, he was like just totally wanted to see this community space that was going to get, you know, used and loved. And yeah. The only park in the park system where the kids shovel it during the winter, you know. Yeah. The basketball guys aren't shoveling the basketball yeah. courts. And, you know, and let's talk about Woody for a minute, man. Like, I think that, dude, that dude... He's the OG advocate of the skate park. I remember when I first moved here and met you and we would skate, you know, we were just hardcore skating all the time. He would come down and hang out and he was like this, you know, surfer dude, you know, landlock surfer dude and all this stuff. And I'm thinking like, man, this dude is cool shit. And he was always talking about, you guys need more stuff down here, you know? And he was talking about that way back when. And for him to really never lose that momentum and be an advocate for what we had going on, to be able to get that park, I think I think Woody's a huge instrumental part of that, you know. Woody was, I mean, Woody was more instrumental than most of the kids at skate park will ever know because totally. he had he had the the ear of the city in a way that nobody else, yeah. you know, in our group ever did. And he was like, hey, you know, these kids, we need to do yeah. this. You and know, I we felt need like to, he was like one of this. us too. Yeah, well, you know and, I mean? and for like, like we got you know, a dude on the inside. I mean, like we're we're the old guys. He's like older than us yeah. and doesn't really even skate and he comes down and he yeah. just you know like but he just has such a uh and such a spot in his heart for like the these you know sort of fringe kids yeah and he's he's always kind of been that like like we gotta take we gotta take care of these kids totally you know? and how do you take care of the kids you give them a good spot to go yeah, give them somewhere and to sprain their ankle thing. yeah give them somewhere to, to smoke and drink <laughs> 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 All the kids need spots to go smoke. Drink drink. sodas. And, yeah. You know, um, smokes. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's, you know, I mean, I, and, and we know who, years ago I did this, like, uh, this little class in the elementary school when Bailey was going to school at, at Skyway Elementary, and it was like this little, and I did this history of skateboarding, yeah. and I was, I was like, I don't know if it's whining, but I was talking to the lady in the office, and I'm like, man, my kids are rowdy. And she's like, well, you're not teaching chess, are you? And I'm like, oh yeah, I picked the kids I got, you know? <laughs> and so it's like that whole, you know, like, well, which kids are we dealing with? You know, like who, who, who gets attracted? Who gets turned on by skateboarding, you know? And it's the rowdy kids, dude. Yes, sir. You know, it's not, it's not the kids, it's the kids with some energy, dude. Yeah. And they, got some, they got some stuff to burn off. Yeah. And, uh, and it's cool, because I like, I like working with those guys. I Me like too. hanging out with those guys. Yeah, those are those always been our peeps. Those are our people, dude. Totally. You know? <laughs> I mean, we need a little spit and some angst to get things moving. Yeah, you know? that's it, man. A little rage against the machine. You know? yeah. It takes a little <laughs> angst to be like, I'm going to jump off that. You know? Yeah, like, yeah. You know, it's the, definitely a different wiring. You know, I mean, if you're really able to push to that next level of, of skateboarding, you got to be wired just a little bit different. Well, and I, think, I, you know, and I remember when. We were talking about, you know, building awareness and PR and, oh, we got to do this and, oh, the kids got to behave and, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, oh, man, how can we get the kids to all behave? And, and then you were like, hey, dude, oh, we can't suck all the coolness out of skateboarding. <laughs> no, man, we can't do yeah, it. Like, you're right, dude. We can't, yeah. Just yeah, you're happen. right. You're right, dude. If at the end of the process yeah. it's like going to a museum, we failed. So, totally. so it's got to be, you know, at the end of it all, dude, it's still got to be a skate park. And the skate park has some edge, dude. And it yeah, should. It and should. it should. Totally. You and, know. you know, and I think that there's a, you know, one thing that I always thought was important with our, our what we had going on was being authentic and genuine to, you know, to our, you know, whatever culture, like to our, our you know, the way that we perceive skateboarding, you know, going, yeah, it's got to be authentic about that, man, because it'd be real easy, like me as a marker to be like, well, let's get the best looking kid here and we'll dress him up and put the helmet on and send him out there with the shirt on that says skater dude and, you know, and, and paint this picture of how we want these people that are some decision makers that we want them to give us a skate park. So we want them to see this or we could just be authentic and real. Yeah. And I think when you're authentic and real that people sense that and people appreciate that, you know, and if they don't, Fuck them. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, you know, you know, at, you know, at the end of it all, dude, we, we got to be true to the tribe that we're part of, dude. Correct. You know, yeah. otherwise, what's the, what's the point? You know, yeah. I mean, yeah. if you can't be real, then we kind of blew it anyway. Right. You know? Let's talk about uh, the Evergreen deal, man, because I thought that was really an interesting... Um, how they wound up in there? Yeah, how they yeah. ended up with that, you know, and we don't got to go into too much detail if you don't want, but just kind of brush on that a little bit and how that they were, how they were chosen and, and that whole... That yeah. whole process, so people know 
how that happens with the city. I know, but you well, yeah, that. and it's a you know, I mean, any any public project is a public project, so it, you know, you you gotta you gotta get it bid out, and uh, and it was a little weird the way it all went down because you know the original Charette meeting, that design meeting, you know, the guys from Grindline, you know, yeah. we paid to have a. a you know, Mike Shapiro come out, and yeah. I like I like Micah, dude. He's a cool guy. He is super and he came cool. out and he did that whole thing. And I, in my mind, the whole time it was going to be you know Grand Line, Grand Line, Grand Line, Grand Line, because I've skated a bunch of Grand Line parks. You know? They're amazing. I'm not familiar with with Evergreen at that time. I wasn't familiar with Evergreen stuff. And uh, and what I had seen was that a lot of that moonscapey, you know, traditional Evergreen stuff. And I was yeah. like, that's not what I'm hearing. You know, part of the part of our job was to not just make our, our skate park. Totally. You know, the job was to make the skate park for Coeur d'Alene. Yeah. And, you know, who are the kids that are going to be skating there every day? Let's make sure that that park is the best park for them. Yeah. You know, not for and like... Pr- and pushes progress, too. That was something that... Pushing progress and being, you know, and, and being modern and, and being cool. You know, I mean, yeah. like, when people come by our skate park, they're like, dude, this one park is rad it is rad. Yeah. and i don't know anybody who's come to our well i don't know maybe there's been somebody come to our park oh, and whine out. about it no, just, but <laughs> you know every most everybody that comes to the park they, they love it yeah and so you and i we went down to boise we went for the land and water conservation thing yeah. and then that that fell through and then we were like oh man and then the city was like well we'll cough up the other 200 so you know we, we wound up with 400 grand yeah for the skate park and, and we, so we knew we had the 400 grand and we were going to get the skate park was going to get built. And that was like happy day. And so we needed to do that uh, qualification for contractors, you know. And so we, we received some packets from some people. Yeah. And, uh, and we sat in the meeting. You were there, you know. Like we, I know. We sat, yeah. we sat in the room, you know. And, and there's, <coughs> there's me and you. Small ass room. And, yeah, like real tight, <laughs> yeah. real intimate. And, yeah. uh, and we got Non-COVID these, friendly. Yeah, for like, a, for like a skater kid who's like an adult. And, uh, and in the world of skateboarding, I still feel like a kid most of the time. And I've got these like pamphlets from like the baddest skate park builders. And, you know, like yeah. anywhere, and we're like, here we get, we get to choose between yeah. like sick, rad, badass, and super cool. Like, Ugh. okay, well, I don't think we're gonna lose no matter what. Yeah. Um, but we're looking at this like this thing from from Evergreen, and it's looking really good. Yeah, you know, and the square footage they're talking about being able to provide for that for the dough was like also intense. We were going to get, yeah. you know, 14,000 square feet as opposed to what the other guys were thinking we could maybe do 9,000 square feet. Right. And, uh, and so, I mean, I, I, I was still kind of stuck on like, dude, I, but I'm creature habit. I know what I know. I still know, I know, I know grind line. So I, I think I'm still just, even if it's less, I know, but I know in the end, we're probably going to get more. And then, um, that vote came in and it was like, well, no, we're going forward with, with Evergreen. Yeah. And then things, things got weird, had to design and then come back and then bid and, and Evergreen still got in there and, and got the bid put together. They're to very it. diligent, man. Like, oh uh, man, they're like, Catherine is well, amazing. And, and they're, uh, they're still in the position. They, they got a lot of experience. And when you look at the amount of parks they built, they got a lot of experience, but they still have so much, you know, uh, passion and drive for the yeah, parks are building. hungry and uh and and billy is still you know like he's he's the owner but he's still like he's super excited about every project yeah and then um they were working down in frisco colorado okay so we got uh richie came in and he was the the lead on the park yeah. and he did um a lot of the design on our park yeah so our park has a lot of Richie Stank all over it, which is yeah. which is rad. Because I, so. I, I love a lot of the things that were you yeah. know were his his ideas, and uh, and as soon as we kind of got the the full view of what they were gonna do, and then once they really start once the park started coming out of the ground, and we really started seeing what it was, it was like, you know, and once the and, and as soon as that decision was made, you know, and once the decision was made, there was no room for like, well, what if and no, dude. Yeah. It was like we move forward with this. this well, and is I what thought we're that doing. The, that working with the city and working with Evergreen and how we approached it, I, you know, I still feel was the, definitely the right way to do it. To where we're like, let the pros do what the pros do. You know, I mean, 
and I could have gone in there and be like, I need more mini ramp things for my tricks, you know, or whatever the shit, you know, but we were just really like, hey man, just make it rad. Yeah. Just make it rad, man. You know, yeah. and that, and I think that that, I could tell with Richie that that really inspired him. And I think that's a huge deal, man. Like, you know, if somebody's passionate, inspired, they're going to give it that little extra and do something cool, you know? Well, and yeah, anytime, if you're, if you are, if you're the advocate group or if you are the guys who get to go by the site often, like if you want to micromanage the crap out of the park builders, don't. Don't, man. Don't. Yeah. Just don't. Yeah. Like it's just it's, not the, yeah. yeah, it's not, it's not the spot to be. So, cause you know, I mean, th these guys, it's, it's what they do. Yeah. You know, I mean yeah. like in my, in my everyday work, you know, <laughs> I don't need like Jimmy Novice coming and like, oh, don't you, don't you maybe think that wire nut should be twisted two more times? Like, no, dude. <laughs> no, man. Yeah. How about you like go, what, whatever you do, go yeah. do it. And like, you know, yeah. and uh, looking at the design though, I saw all of the, the, I saw all the comments. I saw all the things that yeah. people had said that they wanted. They, they had observed that design meeting, even though they didn't run that design meeting. They observed that design meeting yeah. and all that stuff was in there. Yeah, so I mean, definitely we felt taken care of, you know, like when, when that whole thing was, was going together. And I mean, the only, the only thing is, you know, like someday is get another chunk of dough and yeah. do some more. Well, I'll tell you what, man, like, you know, I was just so stoked through the process and like working with the city, like they were just so, um, you know, cause it's, I think it's real easy for like the local, you know, like, like us, us and them, us against them, you know, it kind of felt like that's the way it was before we got involved with everything, you know, and it was like the city and then the skater dudes. And then really realizing it's not like that at all. You know, it was just, we, they didn't have funds and they didn't have stuff for us, but when it came around, they were great. Like, you know, dude, I, I think the city's legit. Like, especially, like, especially the Parks and Rec, as far as my, my experience with them, they were really good. So the, I mean, the, the, the concept of the us and them, you know, like yeah. mo, mo, the, average, the average kid at the skate park thought the city hated skating, Yeah. you know? And, and I, had a, I, I didn't really think that the city hated skating, but I think I had a little bit more of an understanding that, so you got like the mayor, you got the city council, and then you got the city, you know? And, and it's like, yeah, dude, even if they wanna give us 400 grand, like here, here, let's just crack open the city coffers. Here's 400 grand skater kids, just go wild, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They gotta be able to sell it to who they work for, and that's the rest of the city. So, Correct. you know, like, yeah. give us and something we can sell, too. bro. Yeah, give us something we can yeah. sell. So yeah. that's why we gotta work on the PR, is not to like, not to make the mayor think we're cool. We gotta make the city, like, not come at him with pitchforks and torches because he gave us 400 grand. And you know? see the need, you yeah. know? And that was a big thing. And I think where, where we put the park, and we'll talk about this when we'll work on some other stuff, but um, where we put the park was, pretty instrumental too because it's like right that corridor right into downtown you cruise by you look over wow look at this busy cool looking sculpture park so it shows you know really shows the I think the community that this is a high use park man well you know for a little bit they were talking about putting it in McKeon and, oh, yeah. and it was going to be <laughs> and it was going to be right underneath the windows of the city hall uh, and uh, and there was a lot of people and, and I don't know like Woody was like, well, we're losing like the marquee spot. And I know you and I talked about it and we're like, like, hey man, like, I'm not super in love with that spot. Like, <laughs> like, I, don't wanna, I don't wanna skate underneath the windows of the city hall. Mm. And I, I sure don't want all those guys uh, under the windows of city hall all day. Especially that every guy. day. No, <laughs> Especially we know who we're talking about. So um, I know when they were like, well, we know the skate park can function where it is. Yeah. I, I actually sat down, I had some coffee with, with Mayor Widmeyer and he was like, you know, and it was kind of that like, hey man, are we like just, are we just tugging at the wrong rope here? Yeah. The McEwen spot. And he's like, well, we know it'll function where it is now. And I think we should work towards figuring out in that rebuild. And he said, he said something about this four corners project. Yeah. And I, hadn't, I didn't know what that was yet, but that was that rebuild in that whole that whole little spot. Redoing yeah. the ball field 
and making it nice and new. Set in and a nice neighborhood there. directly next to the bowl. And, and putting some, some people who have no idea what they're getting into in their million dollar house <laughs> right next to the skate park. Uh, but, Great idea. Yeah, yeah. Great well, idea. And, and whatever. They, 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 <laughs> no, it's all good. They, they know what's going on yeah, right now. Yeah. Um, but the, and, and we were talking about like whether the skate park was gonna be where, kind of where it was. There was the two spots, the spot where it is, and then the, the other spot where uh, <coughs> it would have been half in what was already the skate park and mm -hmm. a little bit more towards the foregrounds. And I remember you and I talking about it and we were like, hey man, that spot up there, the one that borders Northwest Boulevard, I'm like with the north south, is that's, that's the spot. That's the spot. And when you come down Northwest Boulevard and you drive through um, and you see that side view of the skate park, and even if you don't know what it is, it's interesting and, yeah. it, and it looks nice. Yeah. You know, with the, with the rolling concrete, the red curves and you know, the it's angles. Gorgeous. And it looks great, it yeah. looks great. And uh, <coughs> I mean, it looks so good. I bought a house up above it on the hill so I can look yeah, at it. So you hang out, on, drink you know. your coffee. And, oh, drink my coffee and Nice guy down there, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, I was like, when that, when that house came available, dude, I was like, this, Clearly, this is my house. Dude. Totally, this is the house that has yeah. a view of the skate park. It's amazing. You know, yeah, dude. I like the, the fact that that even came about. Yeah. Is like just makes me feel like we did the right thing. Absolutely, you got your DNA all over it, dude. It's beautiful. Oh man, yeah. Well, and then we can yeah. just park there and hear the clack of the skateboards and drink our coffee and then head it's, down there. It's the best. Dude. Yeah, dude. It's super <laughs> fun. I, I love it, dude. I yeah, we're, li we're living great. the best life ever. Dude. We're living our best skateboard life right now. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I'm, I gotta uh, believe that. Uh, so let's talk about um, one thing I'd like to talk about too is like, just like right off the cuff, like what it's some of your best, like a, a really good skateboard memory that you've had. It doesn't have to be this, what we were talking about, skate park and stuff, just like a cool, I mean, you're just, you're, you're such a great storyteller. You always tell these cool stories, dude, and you got so many of them. I could probably just jog your memory with some, but just like a cool skateboarding story that would be just an interesting skateboard story. Um. All right, dude. So anyway, when I was like, <clears throat> so I had just gotten out of high school, and okay. of course, you know, I'm like 18. I think I'm like, you know, impervious to all things in the world. I'm like this knuckle dragon skateboarder kid. <laughs> so we dragon, yeah. we decide that we're just gonna like jump in a ride. And my my buddy, he used to live in uh, in Eugene, or uh, no, Olympia. Okay. He, he lived in Olympia, and so we, we went over. And we go to Olympia, and we're staying like in this, this RV behind his dad's house. You know, and we're like, oh, dude, living our, our, our Olympia vacation. You know, like yeah, this, yeah, is, yeah. this is 18 year old skateboarder vacation. You yeah, know, we yeah. just like, doing it. And we just, <laughs> we just thumb it down to Olympia, and we're hanging out. And, uh, and this girl, Barbie, and I was like, hey, Barbie, you gotta drive me to Portland tomorrow. My buddy lives there. And she's like, well, I'm gonna stay in Portland. I'm like, you don't have to stay, you just drop me off. Yeah. Just drop me off in Portland. Yeah. So, you I'm know, I'm like, ass. yeah, I'm 18. I got no, no money at all and a skateboard. And I'm like, just drop me off in Portland. I'll be fine. <laughs> so, well, like, probably at the time, you would be fine. You know, probably yeah, still dude, nowadays. It was, it was great, dude. Right. You know, I mean, I had solid people to hang out with. You know, Pig Pen lived down there. That was my buddy. Yeah, yeah, solid and, people. <laughs> <laughs> solid person, dude, yeah. What like, are the grindiest, like, dirtiest oh. skateboarders in history? <laughs> all right, cool. What are the, as that gnarly, boy. most screwed up, yeah, dude, like just a, a solid, yeah. um, solid bro. And, uh, I mean, dude, he is a solid bro, but yeah. we'll get to this, this story. And, uh, and so I just go down there and I'm just get dropped off down at Burnside, you know, and I, I'm skating Burnside and then, you know, I run into to Pigpen and, and we hung out like the first night. I just stay at some party house that, that he didn't live at. We just stayed there. But then the next day, He's like, we're going to go to my father's place and go get some food. And I'm like, well, can I go? And he's like, no, nah, dude, you don't have any money. And I'm like, well, it's your father's place. Well, is this a restaurant called My Father's Place? That's in the name Portland? Of the yeah, dude, the name of the restaurant is My Father's Place. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm, I'm like, all right, well, I guess I don't get to go because I didn't I'm know just, your dad lives here. <laughs> I'm just not eating for this week while yeah. I live in Portland. Yeah. And so he goes to go get like biscuits and gravy in the morning and just never comes back. No, that was. <laughs> this never comes back. So I'm like skating in Portland, just skating Portland, skating Burnside all day, and then it's like slowly but surely, like all the people are just like leaving, you know, because they're like, all right, I'm done skating, until it's like just me skating Portland. And I'm like 18, and it's like starting to get dark, hmm. and it's like in the cartoons where there's just like eyes in the dark. 
<laughs> the like lurkers yeah. are coming out from under the bridge. Yeah. And I was like, dude, I'm gonna, like all of a sudden my like 18 year old toughness was starting to wear pretty thin, yeah, dude. I'm like, I'm, I, think I'm, I think I'm gonna die in Portland tonight. You know, I'm like, just like feeling a little shrimpy, dude. Yeah, and this, this dude comes walking up, dude, and he's big, tall, you know, Indian guy with braids, you yeah. know. And, uh, and it's Osage, that dude, Osage, yeah. like skates down there. And he's like, hey, you should be down here at night by yourself, bro. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Yeah. And he's like, you want to go do some mushrooms? And I was like, sure, dude, I don't know you, but let's go. <laughs> Sounds perfect. Let's do it. <laughs> so I just hang out with a random dude. Yeah, and then I don't know at all, but you know, he's cooler than who I was about to hang out with. So <laughs> yeah, it's cooler than I, that yeah. guy with the band. Cooler, cooler than whoever's hiding under the bridge. And so we just take a walk down to this place called the Crust Palace. What? And then, dude, then I'm like, dude, yeah, dude, this place they call the Crust Palace. And guess who's there, dude? Old Neil Headings and Pigpen are sitting there drinking beer. I'm like, dude, what's up? You left me at Burnside for Ned. You know, they're like, oh, have a PBR and shut up. You know, oh, <laughs> have a Copenhagen. You know, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, you know, that leftover like cardio Copenhagen time era where oh, like, yeah. everybody just has like the giant Copenhagen. Everybody just chewing. Yeah, yeah, yeah you pack shit up. You know, oh, yeah. but yeah, dude, that was my uh, my my grimy. Portland adventure. That's so funny. Just dude. drop it off. Yeah. Uh, all right. What else we got? So, I don't know those things. Let's talk. You know, I like to do kind of like a, a chronological thing where you talk about like past and present um, and future. And I think we kind of hit on the the past and the present skateboarding with being older and stuff. Um, let's kind of talk about like future skateboarding, man. Like you know, like what you think, what you, what you, what's your vision and what you think, you know, where you think skateboarding is going. It could be locally, it could be as a whole, it could be, you know, just, you know, what do you think, what's gonna happen in the future, skateboarding? Well, I don't know, dude. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't have this like, well, the skateboarding's ruined, you know, like. I, Hoverboards. I, I, I but to some degree, dude, I, I feel bad that like the skater kids today don't get to have some of like what we had. Sure. And that's that, you know, like I, we went on a random trip to Nelson, BC when I was a teenager and I just like went to the skate park, met a half a dozen guys and then like just had this like crew of dudes and went to a party with them that night. Yeah. And it was like, boom, just cause you just trip around and, and it was just like that. Yeah. Cause we were this countercultural, counterculture group that we, we were part of the same club. Yeah. You know, you know and, 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 and all, you know, due respect there, I, that, that is still happening. You know, I know a couple of my, my team rider guys just went to Boise and had a little adventure and, you know, and got some shenanigans and went yeah. and did the thing. So it's still happening. And I, and I love to see that as opposed to, you know, it's like this go down the skate park and everything is, you know, the guy comes and blows out the bowl for me and got the city dude waxing it up. And I, you know, and it's real, yeah. you know, it's that, I mean, these guys have it pretty fucking good, but I love the fact that, you know, that there's still that generation that's out there doing that well, kind of stuff, you know? And I think, um, cause we were, you know, we were, we were core group skater dudes. I was like, like skateboarding was the thing totally. for me when I was younger, dude. And so it's what I did all the time. So, you know, like all my dudes were skater dudes. And so when we went to places, we went and like just hung out with whoever was skater people there, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and I think you're right, dude. It is easy to be like, that just doesn't exist anymore because it was a special yeah, thing yeah. just for us. You were romanticizing about it. But you know, when, you, <laughs> when you talk about the guys who are like really hardcore skater guys today, yeah. that that still exists in there. Yeah. Because even though skateboarding has gotten so mainstream, and even though little Jimmy, you know, there's, there's like 14 little Jimmys and their moms bring them down there and then they're like filming them for their little junior Instagram account and all this stuff, you know, like, yeah. like that is happening. But the, the real core skater guys still have like this, this their own little counterculture subgroup of skateboarding that's like the, the core skater subgroup counterculture group. Yeah. And I think that still exists. It totally does, know? man. You know, and, and with having the ramp and we do the weekly sessions and stuff, we see, you know, um, because pretty much the way the required deal is if you come here, you skate. You yeah. know what I mean? So there's not this like skate park lurker-ish vibe. 
I just, this is a fucking no-go. You know, if you come here and skate, you're not going to go lurk at the gym. If you do, you're a fucking weirdo, dude. So don't do it here. Yeah. You know? So the guys that come here, they're genuinely into skateboarding, genuinely into progressing. And as long as you're into that, man, people could definitely come and skate at, at you know, that here any time, you know, that time that we're doing it. And seeing those kind of guys is very, it just, it like gives me hope. You know what I mean? I'm going, cool, man. These dudes are genuinely in to being progressive. They're, you know, pushing each other. There's that heated vibe going on. You know, there's that hunger, all that stuff kind of happening. And I, I see it alive and well here where m maybe sometimes when I go to other spots, I see a lot of, um, a lot of zoom esque kind of vibe going yeah. on, if I'm being honest, man. Well, you know I mean? it's the stuff. You know? I was, I was talking to, uh, I was actually talking to Bailey about this one just the other day, which was like, so when I was in high school, Powell came out with that video, Hot Batch. Yeah. And so at that time, dude, and I, the way I was skating, I was watching that, and I'm like, man, maybe I, maybe I got a shot, dude. Like I, I can be a contender here, dude. Like do I can pressure flips. I could maybe, I, yeah, like most of these guys are just doing pressure flips. I could do that, you know, like. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and then I remember like the questionable video came out right after that, uh -huh. and I was like, I'm not. Uh -huh. I'm not. I'm not a contender. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that, that was so gnarly. That video alone probably destroyed a million young skateboarders' oh, yeah, dreams, dude. dude. It, it I know when it came out, I was just all, oh, waiting on the, with the, in the flip, I, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, whoa. Maybe I'll stick to mini ramp. Then the mini ramp part came out, I was all, huh? Oh. Oh, everything's so, they're so good. I'll just get you like know? a shop sponsor maybe, I don't know, man. And now, <laughs> now, you know, like, well, one, there's like, there's so much content. Yeah. Everything's out there everywhere. And there's always. so much content. There's so much good skating yeah. everywhere. You know, I mean, I think that there was always a lot of good skating, but it just wasn't, it, there wasn't, the content wasn't there for everybody to see. So it didn't seem like it. And, uh. And now it's like so weird because the shots they have to get for some of these stuff when, uh, you know, like somebody's doing like a gap and you're like, dude, why is this thing zoomed out? Homeboy's like this tall on the TV. Yeah. And it's because the gap is so huge yeah. that you got to take the shot from like 45 feet away to get the whole thing in the, in the, in the frame. Yeah. So, so it's like, dude, well, where's skateboarding going? Like, I don't know, dude. Or like the human body is still made out of like bones and blood and some skin. And these guys are jumping off stuff that's like 20 feet high. It's amazing. Like what? Yeah. I mean, is it in Well, you know, water? I don't know if, you ever, if you've seen this show, but it's really interesting. It's uh, Pretending I'm Superman. It's uh, about the Tony Hawk skateboard video game when it came out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, it's really interesting, but it was talking about, you know, it had all the characters, all the dudes on there, but it was talking about how um, that video game changed the course of skateboarding progression because kids that played that game thought that they could do that shit, and then they did. <laughs> <laughs> then they did it, yeah. And, and yeah. I'm like, dude, you're absolutely right, because I remember that game coming out, and like the X Games, 2000, all that kind of bumping off, you know, and go, wow, man, you know, like, really playing out my, uh, my shit, you know, okay, whatever, but I, you know, I just generally love skateboards, so I didn't give a shit. But noticing kids just getting better at the skate park, I go, dude, either I'm like getting older, these kids are getting better, which was both, yeah, but you know, it was, and then now it's just like you flip in and you flip out, and you you know you're right, man. They got to zoom the way at hell out, and they're like, we're jumping a train, you know, and like this shit is really happening. Where that was like level seven on the video game back in the day. Yeah, dude. And it, <laughs> I I mean I I don't know if I'd say I love it, but I just it cracks me up when I'm talking to like one of my friends who like and they, and they don't even skate anymore. Yeah, and they're like. Well, I mean, these kids think they're cool, but you know, back in our day. I'm like, dude, back in our day, our tricks are their setup tricks, dude. Suck my ass, dude. Like, what are you talking about? Just dude? own it. You're it's so, so like, you're so delusional as to what it was, bro. Like, you know, like we still, like we still got video, dude. Like you can reflect back on the video and it's like, you know, it was good for what it was. Right. But it's not like what these guys are doing yeah. now, dude. I skate with like guys at the skate park yeah. now and I'm like, dude, these kids, they're way are, good. They're way good, dude. Yeah. And and the level of consistency that these kids have now yeah. is, you know, like when I was skating and I was like teenager to like, you know, like 20 years old, like it just reflecting on it, dude, we were horribly inconsistent. Yeah. Even the pros were. Yeah. You know, I remember seeing a contest, dude, and I think day one landed one trick. Huh. I was like, yeah, dude, like, I mean, Instagram, you can do a lot of clips, but I see these kids skate in, in person 
and they still are. They're consistent, crushing dude. It. Yeah. yeah, crushing yeah. it. Lines yeah. all the time. Yeah, you know, but in all due defense to the glory day storytellers there, you know, I was, um, I knew I was going to do this podcast with you today. And so I looked back at that skate video part and I told you I was going to bring this up. But oh, yeah, yeah. The skate yeah. video part, um, we edited, like, when I first started getting to editing, I think it was like 2000 something, and you had some clips on a Hi8, and uh, we edited this shit together on iMovie, and, uh, and we were, well, we'll actually play that video. I have that clip, so we'll play that video um, at the very end, you know, it's a good segue into the video. Um, but, dude, I was still looking at that shit, and I'm like, dude, this fool is still killing it. Dude, like, it was like a relevant, there's relevant clips in there today to where, you know, I mean, dude, you're doing like, there's one where you're doing like a backside 180 kick flip fucking indie grab the hard way over the, of, a, of a hip at some <laughs> random ass park. That's a hard ass trick, dude. And your 270 transfers, all that stuff was soup. It's fucking legit, dude. Yeah. I guarantee if like the young guys see that, which they will if they're watching this, They'll be like, damn, dude, this old fart had some shit going on back Yeah, in the day. dude, you know. And, yeah. And, so uh, give it right here, man. What, you're, dude, you're my favorite skater, dude. What, what I really hope is, you know, like every once in a while when we're skating with the Young Turks, you know, like we get whipped up yeah. to where we're like, and you start feeling young, dude. And if we can do it without breaking a hip, rad. But like then you start <laughs> like, you know, like you'll, every once in a while, dude, one of those tricks like yeah. just pops out. And then, you know, like the kids are like, uh-huh. Did that really just fucking happen? I know, dude. And, and I'll, let me tell you this, dude. When it happens, I end up hearing about it, dude. I'm like, boom. Dude, you should have seen open. I knew he had that one. Back tail, back. <laughs> Kick back tail slides. I was all, pfft. Ah, yeah. Those that's so 2002. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, you know what I mean? So that's fucking badass, dude. Well, we'll kind of, we'll wrap it up here. I feel like we've kind of wrapped on here, but we're going to have a session after this. Um, we're going to play your video show that and then we're going to have a um a session with a couple of our, our writers here and um, before i go though i want to make sure that i stoke you out with some gear so i got some new t-shirts busting out here this is a photo t-shirt here of my team writer ricky so shout out to ricky um this is a selfie yeah, dude ricky's I, rad dude ricky's he was, rad. came out to idaho dude skated and, yeah. and like talk about consistent dude yeah that guy like he is and he's just a, such Wait a rad guy, out. man. He just, you know, he's always dropping rad clips. But this will be on our website real soon, as soon as Marty does it, wherever you are, Marty, right? Yeah, Marty's going to do it. And we're going to have this on there. Um, but this is a selfie. He took this photo of him doing this. So if you know anything about some photography shit, it's pretty hard to do. That's so a, this is for you, brother. It's a long selfie stick, dude. That's what I thought, too. <laughs> I, I was like, how the hell is he doing? It's like a drone shot? Like, is this a Photoshop shit? What's going on? I don't, I don't even, even know. see the stick. I don't even know, but it's, but it's fucking No, yeah, sick. dude. And I, can't, one, I can't even get people to, like, hit the high point when you give them the camera to take a picture. I feel it, man. I know. He did it himself. This other one, Skate Dads are Rad. I, didn't, I don't have a Skate Granddads are Rad, but, you know, yeah, as time dude. goes on, we'll get on it. So got it, got it. You, skate brother. gramps or get cramps, skate, I don't know. Skate gramps, get cramps. <laughs> there you go, skate gramps, get cramps. I love yeah, it. Dude. All right, brother. All right, All right man. Much well, love, dude. You. And um, thanks for joining, everybody. If you made it this far, um, next session, we're going to get into that. So thanks for tuning in. Later. In my bag, I am useless, but not for long. The future is coming on. I ain't happy. Oh, I'm feeling glad I got sunshine. In my bag, I am useless, but not for long. The future is coming on. It's coming on. It's coming on. It's coming on. It's coming on. My future is coming on. Yeah. It's coming on. Yeah. 
finally someone let me out of my cage No time for me is nothing cause I'm counting no age And now you couldn't be there, you shouldn't be scared I'm good at repairs, and under each snare intangible Bet you didn't think so, I command you to panoramic view Look and make it all manageable, pick and choose Sit and lose all your different crews Chicks and dudes who you think is really big and twos Picture you getting down in a picture too Like your little fuse, you think it's fictional, mystical Maybe spiritual, hero who appears to you To play your view when you're too crazy Lifeless to those with definition for what life is Priceless to you because I put you on the hype shit Like it, gun smoking right just we want to get psychic among those possessions Oh, I ain't happy, I'm feeling glad I got sunshine In my bag I am useless, but not for long The future is coming on I ain't happy, oh, I'm feeling glad I got sunshine In my bag I am useless, but not for long The future is coming up, it's coming up, it's coming up, it's coming up it's coming on my future, it's coming on, yeah the essence, the basics, without did you make it Allow me to make this child like a nature Rhythm, you have it or you don't, that's a fallacy, I'm in them Every sprout and tree, every child of peace, every cloud of sea You see with your eyes, you see destruction and demise Corruption in the lies of this fucking enterprise That I'm sucking through your lies, to rustle Not as muscle, but production he provides Me as a guy, y'all don't see me now Cause you don't see with your eyes, you perceive with your mind And that's the inner, I'ma stick around with jail And be a mentor, plus a few rounds of motherfuckers remember what the thought is I brought all this so you can Survive with well, all was lawless feeling sensations that you thought was there. No squealing, remember that it's all. Oh, I ain't happy. I'm feeling glad I got sunshine in a bag. I am useless, but not for long. The future is coming on. I ain't happy. I'm feeling glad I got sunshine in a bag. I am useless, but not for long. The future is coming up. It's coming up. It's coming up. It's coming up. It's coming on my future, oh, it's coming on, it's coming on, yeah.